After arriving at Beyond's Hall, you've learned the famous Bilbo Baggins was taken by Mirkwood spiders mere hours ago. Without hesitation, you volunteer to find and retrieve the Hobbit, hopefully before he's consumed, or worse. And so you find yourself before Greenwood the Great, that the wary and the wise call Mirkwood. A sleeping evil once inhabited the Greenwood, but was purged many years ago. The forest has since known a period of peace and the return of wholesome life. As the shadows now gather under the trees, you sense a foulness on the air. You fear evil may have returned to this realm. You begin to search for clues as to which direction the spiders took Bilbo. There are ample signs of recent struggle in the small glade, and several of the Hobbit's possessions are strewn about. After a few moments, you notice a gleam of metal on the forest floor. Perhaps a sign. You're about to investigate, as several giant spiders creep into the glade. They don't seem at all interested in assisting the search. Quite the contrary. I will go and look on the halls of Durin. I do not fear either pain or death. Bilbo's mind must have been clear during the first moments after his capture. You notice that he slid his sword along the undergrowth as he was hauled away. When the spider's poison immobilized him, he must have dropped Sting. Encouraged, you venture into the shadowy green-gray wilderness that is Mirkwood. The small cocoon is dropped before the lady. Ha! It's it's my lady! Scrumptious it is! Taste! Sweet! <laughs> the skinny creature squeals in pleasure and anticipation, jumping to and fro on arms and legs as if a spider himself. The creature gives the cocoon a kick. False it is! Badlands! Trickster! Thief! Cheater! Alum! Alum! Eats it! The spider moves to hover over the cocoon. Spear-sized mandibles emerge slowly from its dripping maw. Suck it to bounces, milady! No hanging this, or drying this needed. Not the like tough dwarfs, or tricky elves. Sweet and juicy hobbities. Just 
Nothing closes, my lady. For precious, precious is in its pocket sauce. My precious. Spider Monstrosity is about to delve into her meal when a sudden noise is heard from the edge of the lair. Flapping its hands nervously and bobbing its scrawny neck, the creature pleads. Oh, don't listen to what's the noises, my lady. Eat, eat, while habit is warm, Someone has arrived, and the spiders move to greet them. For hours you delve into the menacing forest. Thorny undergrowth and sticky crawlers grab at you as if with minds of their own. A subtle change in the echo of the wood heralds a change in scenery, and you soon come upon a dark, gurgling stream. While the watery smells and soothing sounds relax you, you've been warned not to trust any water in Mirkwood, save for that gathered from fresh rain. The spiders must have crossed the stream by traversing the canopies above. But how will you cross? A nearby dead tree may be the answer. You attempt to push at the dry trunk, hoping for it to fall and bridge the stream. Unfortunately, your efforts attract the local wildlife. The dead tree falls across the stream with a splintery crack. You use the fallen trunk to step across, careful to not slip. What could cause wild creatures to attack so? Perhaps the corrupted stream is their main source of water. As you jump off the trunk on the far side, a deep rumble greets you. For a brief moment you wonder what could make such a sound, but only for a brief moment. For out of the shadows shambles an enormous black bear. It roars. The sound is staggering. It fills the air like a living thing, terrifying and primordial. The impact of the roar sends you reeling backwards, almost into the stream. It charges. An avalanche of fur, teeth and... My no axe swings too. My axe is restless in my hands. Do what you will. But I will hinder it, if I may.
smite you if you touch him! Before the monotony of the forest claws at you again, you come upon a sudden clearing. The sluggish breeze and one grey light of the dell are a welcome change from the humid twilight of the forest. On the far side of the clearing, you spy what you've been looking for. A group of large spiders hovering over a tightly wound cocoon. It's time for a rescue. I can help with that. No, 
living man am I? The lady and her brood are gathered at the edge of their lair. A band of orcs and goblins have emerged from the trees. Some heave empty wagons, others carry torches. A huge orc tromps to stand before the lady. Oh, the moon is full, Spidey! Uthak comes to collect! He snarls. The lady chitters at her lieutenants who rush back into the webs. The spiders soon return with web-wrapped cocoons, depositing them in front of the orc captain. Goblins rush to gather the cocoons, loading them into carts. As the last cocoons are loaded, a hooded goblin begins screeching at Uthak, pointing to a parchment full of hash marks. Uthak glares at the yelling goblin for a moment, and blinks and pivots back to the lady. We won short, Leggy! The orc's grainy voice is mild, but laced with promise of violence. Cold masters don't like swords! Uthak don't like short! We had deal! After recovering, Will Elk thanks you profusely. Over the past few months, he tells you, a number of tribesmen have gone mysteriously absent. He suspects they've fallen prey to similar circumstances, but offers no explanation as to why the great spiders have suddenly become so daring. Afraid to return home through the forest alone, Will Elk offers to join you, and suggests which direction the spiders were taking him. Somewhere under the never-ending trees before you, an old hobbit awaits rescue or doomed.